fortune smiles on most people. Well, for me, it just goes... <laughs> now, not only do I have to share my room with Molly Morgan, queen of the shallow people, I have to share my birthday as well. Only I have a hunch her sweet 16 party's gonna be a little bigger than mine. I don't know, maybe it's the swans in the pool that give it away. <laughs> Happy birthday, Dorothy Jane. Oh, thanks, Gregory. Are you going to Molly's party tonight? I wasn't invited. Oh, well, then here's the opportunity of a lifetime. I'd like you to come with me as my date. Gee, thanks, Gregory, but I don't think so. Oh, come on, Dorothy Jane. I want to show up at this party with the greatest looking girl at school. Well, thank you. But she wouldn't go with me. <laughs> Just when you think you've settled down And you feel like you're almost home Just when the wheel stops spinning round Love speaks in with the plan of its own Love comes in unexpected places Life turns in unexpected ways I swear we laugh at the What is going on out there? There are swans in the swimming pool. You should see them just glide across the water. You know, swans are the most graceful, elegant creatures. Right up until they poop in the pool. <laughs> what do you think of Dorothy Jane's birthday cake, Mama? Oh, I don't know. It sort of seems to be bulging out on one side. That's on purpose. I made it shaped like the state of Washington since we live here now. This is Mount St. Helens erupting. And here's the dead prospector. Well, how festive! Boy, is she gonna be surprised. This is the best birthday party we ever gave Dorothy Jane. She's gonna love it. I can't believe my little girl is turning 16. You aren't gonna tell us about the 30 hours of labor again, are you? Dorothy Jane, please. You gotta come to this party with me. I'm desperate. Thanks a lot. Dorothy Jane, don't look! I didn't see anything. No, no, you didn't let me finish. I meant I was desperate for a woman of your beauty and intelligence and sensitivity, and this isn't working, is it? Gregory, I said no. I'm not going to Molly's party. Well, then will you lend me your sweater? What? Why? So I can put it on the chair next to me and say my date's in the bathroom. Gregory, you're not going out with me or my clothing. Phone ring? Are you expecting a call? Oh, no. No, nothing important. Just an RSVP from Candace Cole and Kimberly Marks. God, if they come to my party, then everyone will think we're friends. Like, you're just not in until they say you're in. <laughs> yeah, like they have a list. You've seen it? Am I on it? <laughs> the only list you're on is one for a brain transplant. <laughs> oh, the doctor called. You're moving up. <laughs> oh, Molly. I've been looking for you. That heavy metal band you made me hire, Eat My Face? <laughs> How much do you really want it? Uh, Daddy, please, I've got much bigger problems. Candace and Kimberly have not RSVP'd. Oh. Well, I hope you sent the invitations by airhead mail. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a joke? My secretary told the bakery exactly what Molly wanted. Five layers, pink frosting, white sugar castles on top. And what do I get? Dorothy Jane's birthday cake. And a lovely one it is. Mayor Sue, Chucky Lee, why don't we take the surprise into the other room before Dorothy Jane accidentally gets a peek at it? Oh, at this very moment, 16 years ago, I was flat on my back screaming for more painkillers. So, 16, huh? Same as Molly. What sort of celebration are you planning? Well, Mama's making my favorite dinner. Oh, dinner. That's nice. And what else? And then there's a surprise that I'm not supposed to know about. Just between you and me, I think it's a cake. 
Hey, what about this? Why don't we make this thing tonight a joint Sweet 16 party for Molly and for you? For me? Guess what? Candace and Kimberly said they're coming. They like me. They really like me. Well, I got a great idea. Kimberly was gonna have her nose job today, but her doctor got run over by a golf cart. Isn't that great? <laughs> Molly, why don't we make tonight a joint birthday for both you and Dorothy Jane? Oh, let's not. <laughs> Look, I think I'll just stick to my own party, Mr. Morgan. Thanks, anyway. See, Daddy, she doesn't want to. Molly, I don't think you fully grasp my idea. We include Dorothy Jane or there'll be no party. Dorothy Jane? Do you want to share a birthday party with me? Yes. What do you mean, yes? <laughs> Go ahead, Dorothy Jane. Take a good long look at it. <laughs> Surprise, it's a cake. Mama, guess what? Mr. Morgan offered to make tonight a party for both Molly and me. I've never even been to a party that fancy, and this one's gonna be for me. And Molly, of course. Well, isn't that nice of Mr. Morgan? Okay, it's all set. I told the bakery to add your name to the cake. You can't back out now. Oh, I won't. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. I have so much to do before tonight. What am I going to wear? And what am I going to say while I'm wearing it? <laughs> Isn't it great to see kids happy? Yeah, and doesn't it just break your heart when you have to tell them no? Um, I guess. <laughs> Look, Mr. Morgan, I appreciate your offer. Oh, don't say any more. It's my pleasure. But there is no way I can afford to pay for half of this party. Oh, everything's already paid for. I just have to call the florist and order 16 more pink roses for Dorothy Jane. Oh, she'd love that. Nobody's ever given her roses before. And the band will need to know her favorite song for the spotlight dance. Well, it used to be I'm a little teapot, but I'll have to double check. <laughs> and the photographer's here already, so we'll just make sure that he takes a portrait of Dorothy Jane in the gazebo. Gazebo? It's just a small one. I mean, if it was too big, we wouldn't have room for the hot air balloon. <laughs> now you're joking. Yes, we can't have a hot air balloon. It would get in the way of the fireworks display. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Morgan, but don't you think you're going just a little bit overboard? Overboard? No, not at all. Uh, Dad, the ice sculpture of Molly's head is here. Her nose is dripping. <laughs> Dorothy Jane. Mom, I don't know what to wear tonight. What do you think of this dress? No, it's terrible. Forget it. What about this one? No, no, you're right. It's wrong. How about this one? Too busy, not busy enough? Longer, shorter belt? Dorothy Jane, not so fast. Okay. Longer, shorter, belt. Sit down, sweetheart. There's something we need to discuss. Oh, no. Every time you start off that way, you're either going to tell me I can't do something I want to do or a pet has died. Please tell me we just got a dead dog. <laughs> Dorothy Jane, today you turn 16. And if the state of Washington feels that you're old enough to get into a car and potentially mow down innocent pedestrians. <laughs> then I believe you're old enough to make this decision. What decision? About your birthday. Now, on the one hand, your brother and sister have been working very hard to give you a birthday party, a very simple one, but it's heartfelt and sincere. And on the other hand, Mr. Morgan is essentially turning his backyard into Molly World. <laughs> now, I think you know how I feel, but this is up to you. Would you rather spend your birthday with your family, who loves you very much, or with a hundred strangers wallowing in an incredibly extravagant, one might even say obscene display of excess? <laughs> oh, thank you, Mama! Party seems to be going well out there. I hope it rains and there's a flood and nobody out there knows how to swim. <laughs> now, Chucky Lee, that's not very nice. Let's hope they do know how to swim. Well? How do I look? Like Benedict Torkelson. <laughs> you know, you look a lot like a sister I used to have. And used to like. That's enough, you two. 
What's the matter? Come on, let's all go to the party. I'm not going. This was our party. Till you decided it wasn't good enough for you. I never said that. Come on, you guys. It's not that I don't appreciate what you did. It's just that I'm only going to be 16 once. Just go on to your dumb old party. Yeah. Hope you have a real good time. Okay, I will. Let's have a party. <laughs> More meatloaf, anyone? Great, right, I love some. Me too. How about you, Dorothy Jane? I know meatloaf is your favorite. I'd love some. Good, Dorothy Jane, that's the spirit. Good evening, everyone. Looking good, Gregory. I tend to agree. <laughs> Has my date shown up yet? Oh, good, you got a date. I made a few phone calls and got a date with... Linda, which is French for Linda. <laughs> Sorry, Dorothy Jane, you had your chance, but you lost out too. Linda. <laughs> yeah, this Kimberly, you have got to see this. It's so great. Hey, Molly, don't you look beautiful? Thank you. These are the Torkelsons. Do you know Dorothy Jane? We sit next to each other in English. <laughs> okay, guys, get ready. This is so cool. <gasps> look at me. <laughs> Just a head? Really? There was that Brad Hodges out there. What a dweeb. Really? I had to invite him. And what about Susie Briggs with her new braces? When she smiles, she looks like the grill on my father's car. Really? I had to invite her. Now, girls, if you can't say something nice about somebody, you shouldn't say anything at all. Nice hat. Really? <laughs> OK, I think it's time we went to the entertainment portion of this party. Chucky Lee, take out that fiddle and go, boy. Yes, ma'am. Well, the swans attacked the sushi bar. It was a standoff for a while, but we got him back in the pool. Well, all but one. Excuse me. Well, hello. <laughs> Mr. Morgan? I'm Mr. Morgan. And who might you be, my dear? I'm Mr. Morgan. I'm Linda. What can I do for you? The question is, what can I do for you? I asked you first. I'm your date for the party. Um, Has anybody seen... Linda. Linda? Yes? Yes! <laughs> I mean, how do you do? I'm Greg. I believe we spoke on the phone this afternoon. You're my date. Gregory! What's going on here? Dad, I know there's an age difference, but I am willing to overlook that. Gregory, where exactly did you meet that woman? Well, I let my fingers do the walk-in, and I ended up in the yellow pages under escort services. Thank you, fingers. You hired an escort? Gregory, there's a name for a woman like that. I know. It's Linda. <laughs> Linda, I'm afraid that Gregory won't be requiring your services this evening or this lifetime. Dad, no, no, please. God, it's not fair. I already paid. Oh, we'll get your money back. Want to bet? <laughs> Linda, don't go. I could love you. <laughs> Linda. All right, go, but leave your sweater. Would you like some meatloaf, Mr. Morgan? Oh, no, thanks. I... Dorothy Jane, what are you doing here? Why aren't you outside? I decided I'd rather celebrate my birthday with my family. But I really did appreciate your offer. Oh. Mrs. Torkelson, can I speak to you for a minute, please? You talked her out of it, didn't you? I did not. Oh, come on. Your fingerprints are all over this one. This was Dorothy Jane's decision. I don't think any 16-year-old would choose meatloaf and a noisemaker over that party out there. Well, my 16-year-old did, and I'm proud of her. Family means a lot to us. And it doesn't to us? Nothing is more important than my family. Now, if you excuse me, i got to get down to the office. <laughs> did you just hear yourself? 
First you say family's important to you, then you leave your daughter's birthday party to go to work? Hey, it just came up. My accountant called. Apparently we're being audited, and this is the only chance we have to get together. Anyway, the last thing a 16-year-old girl needs at her birthday party is her father. 16-year-old girls don't always know what they need. Look, just keep your eye on Molly's party for me. Will you do that, please? Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, I think it's time for the main event. Jump on up there, Chucky Lee. And now for the greatest cake ever baked by human hands. <gasps> Party. I'm sorry, guys. I tried. I really did. Oh, Dorothy Jane, I know that party out there seems joyous and glittering to you. But if you take a really close look, you'll see something different. Hey, you two, knock it off! <laughs> that party's about things. It's not about feelings. It's, it's got no heart. Molly's father isn't even at her party. And you've got your whole family here with you. I love y'all, and I appreciate everything you've done tonight. But right now, I'm just not in a party mood. I think this was a great party, Mama. Me too. Thank you, Pumpkins. Excuse me, Mama. But a man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> this evening's been a disaster. It's bad enough that I have to ruin my 16th birthday for me. I ruined it for the people I love as well. I don't know why I do these things. But sometimes I just feel so trapped. I hate always being the good girl. Just once, why can't I be silly and vain and shallow? Life seems so much easier for those people. So much more fun. This is the most horrible night of my life. What happened? Break a nail? <laughs> I've been stabbed in the back. I hate them. Who? Candace and Kimberly. I overheard them talking about me. They trashed my clothes, my nose, my food, my band. They ruined my whole party, and then worst of all, they left. <laughs> Wanted this night to be so special. Molly, who cares what Betty and Veronica think? <laughs> Where did I go wrong? I had all the right things for this party. But don't you see? Birthdays are not about things. They're about feelings and being with people who really... Whoa! Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> My mother's jeans just made a sneak attack. <laughs> Look, Dorothy Jane, you've got the right idea. It's not material things that make up a birthday. I'm gonna go down and give you some time to yourself. Be sure nobody takes any of my presents. <laughs> Happy birthday, Molly. Happy birthday, Dorothy Jane. I'm back. How are the parties going? Well, yours is a big success. Mine, on the other hand, didn't turn out quite as well. Dorothy Jane's upstairs in her room. Alone or with all her values? <laughs> Maybe I was a little bit self-righteous. But you know what? Even if I could give my daughter a party like that one, I don't believe I would. Oh, you don't think so? No, I don't. Because I think it sends kids the wrong message. It tells them what's important is what they have, not what they are. Well, to me, it says that I love my daughter very much. She only turned 16 once. I want this night to be special for her. Well, I guess we have to agree to disagree. Fine. I'm right. You're wrong. 
still not in a party mood. I just can't stay up in my room because Molly's up there. What's she doing up there? Feeling sorry for herself. The party didn't go quite the way she hoped. What? It's not possible. I made sure this party is everything she wanted. Maybe she doesn't really know what she wants. You're one of those people that are annoyingly right all the time, aren't you? I'd say no, but I'd be wrong. I better go talk to her. Take her up a piece of cake. It's delicious. Homemade, you know. Dorothy Jane, I never did give you your present. Now, it's nothing fancy. Eiffel Tower. It's beautiful. Chucky Lee and Mary Sue had to devour quite a few popsicles to get our basic construction material. <laughs> they even have a little French flag at the top. It's so cute. Look inside the flag. It's a savings passbook. There's not much in there now, but it's a start. So maybe someday. You can spend your birthday in Paris, like you always dreamed. Thank you. Hey, I have a date. She's in the bathroom. You want to see your sweater? That party sounds like fun. You sure you don't want to go? I think maybe I would, on one condition. What? You come with me. Oh, I'd love to. I'm sure your purse is in here somewhere. <laughs> I can't believe I walked out without my purse. Did you find it? No sign of it. And I promise you, I will not leave your side until we find that purse. <laughs> Let's start with the gazebo. <laughs> You know, this could be the start of a beautiful friendship. 